the Pan-African Connection was started in 1989 by myself and my husband, Vandelli Tahimba. And Vandelli, my husband passed away four years ago, but uh, he was a great, great African one of the greatest human beings ever. But uh, he started the Pan-African Connection as a tool or a vehicle to organize uh, our people and to educate them about their history and culture and about Pan-Africanism, you know, to bring them closer to Mother Africa. Uh, because we knew that identity, knowing who you are is one of the most important things that a person can have is identity, right? Knowing who you are. Because your identity guides you, right? And we needed people to know that Africa is, you know, a great place. It's done, we, as African people, we've done great things in the past. So if you know you've done great things in the past, you know you can do them today. So it's, we wanted to give them that foundation of Africa. We are a community space that the people can come to and uh, organize with different organizations around political issues, around social justice issues, around global international issues. But as far as classes, of course we have African dance, African drumming, we have Spanish class, we have Swahili, we have rhythm and percussions, we have art, all kinds of art, cartoony, all kinds of things that, you know, that just things that people it's neat to feel good about themselves. I am Tachuba, the 17th century slave woman accused of witchcraft, beaten until I confessed. My confession sparked the sale of witch trials, or black girl magic, if you will. I am Marie Levu, voodoo queen of New Orleans, secret stirring while the gumbo simmers. I am Sojourner Truth and ain't I a woman. I am Madam C.J. Walker's hot comb smoking, calling out 19th century gender roles and double standards, turning the beauty shop into the place for the revolution. I am Shirley Chisholm's hammer cracking the ceiling that feels more like concrete than glass for women of color, I am Ruby Bridge's lunchbox. The refusal on Claudette Colvin's tongue at 15 as she refused to give her bus seat to Jim Crow, before Rosa Parks. I am the swell of her belly at 16 as she was no longer respectable enough to mobilize behind anymore. But I am still the no bitter and fierce resting on Rosa Parks' higher tongue. I am the back of the bus, thrown to the back of the movement needed to birth the revolution but not invited to the march. I am the fight against the civil rights movement's rape culture in 1965. I am Dorothy Heights, complicating the revolution with all my intersections. Told to pick one label or none at all, I am Dorothy Counts. Spit on and thrown garbage at for integrating a high school. Armed with a notebook, met with a riot, sticks and stones, mama said. I am one great thing that we do that I love, out of this store, my husband has helped create hundreds of businesses out of this store with other people opening businesses, right? So we help develop uh, young business people, entrepreneurs, because they see we're just normal people. If we can do it, we can do it. So we do help. Uh, small businesses also to get their information out about their, their products. It's important for these African babies to know who they are and is it important for them to know where they come from so they can know where they are going. For so long we have been lied to. For so long people have told us history that somebody else's history and not really our history so we are confused. You see what I'm saying? We walking around not knowing who we are, not knowing who our ancestors are, and not knowing where we come from. The baton of power has been handed to us by our ancestors, right? So we just come from a very powerful people. And uh, our job is to pass that baton on uh, to the next generations. But we, we have the power. I mean, we have the magic. And what's important about that in this day and time is that our people don't know they have the power of magic. But once you know, I mean, it just, just opens up yeah. everything. So. I'm just so very happy to yeah. be able uh, to do this type of work. And I'm just so very happy that my husband, you know, corralled me into uh, this, this, this whole concept of knowledge and learning about self and, you know, struggle and justice and uh, I'm just very happy to be able to do this type of work. It's, it's very rewarding. Maybe I may not ever become a millionaire, but uh, I'm very rich, you know, and just because of the rewards that come out of seeing people grow and develop. Committed to the people's struggle, committed to the people's process, committed to the people's progress, wanting to make sure her granddaughters, her grandchildren to come will have a path that they can follow. I say, I say.